Welcome to the Wickedly Smart Women podcast featuring stellar conversations with emerging and established Wickedly Smart Women. Thanks for joining us today as we celebrate the Wickedly Smart Women who are committed, care deeply, and have the courage to take action and create change all around the world. Now here's your host, Emerald Green Forest. Welcome to another episode of the Wickedly Smart Women podcast, where we celebrate wickedly smart women and provide our listeners with a wealth of wisdom, along with immediately actionable steps to be smarter, spunkier, and more successful in their impact and their leadership. This is your host, Emerald Green Forest, and today we welcome our special guest, Kim Seltzer. With a vat of knowledge and experience as a therapist, certified style and confidence coach, dating coach, and matchmaker, Kim Seltzer has helped thousands of people find lasting love and connection, attract success, and build valuable relationships using her unique confidence makeover process. Using an outside-in approach, Kim has changed lives by changing their style, emotional, and social intelligence using her signature formula, the Charisma Quotient, working on body language, first impressions, image, and messaging, and how it impacts attraction. This Los Angeles-based expert travels the country helping people discover confidence, charisma, and connection as a speaker at national matchmaking conferences, eHarmony, Neutrogena, the Guild at Universal, and iDate, And Kim is also a regular contributor to the Huffington Post and digitalromance.com with appearances in Cosmopolitan, Oprah Magazine, Red Book, Reader's Digest, Ask Men, Fox News Magazine, Yahoo Shine, and the Washington Examiner, among a myriad of other publications. You can also find Kim as a frequent co-host on the podcast, The Jordan Harbinger Show with Jordan Harbinger as well as acting as the leading love expert on the traveling live dating show, The Great Love Debate, and the cable reality dating show, The Romance. You can also listen to her now on her own podcast, The Charisma Quotient, and she's currently hosting the Flirt Academy workshops nationwide. I also have had the extreme pleasure of being on the dance floor with Kim and uh, (laughs) connecting with her in person at the New Media Summit. And so welcome to the show, Kim. It's a pleasure to have you. Oh my gosh, it's so good to be here, Emerald. It's awesome. You are pretty astoundingly amazing with all of your accomplishments. So clearly you are a wickedly (laughs) smart woman. Yeah. And I would love to talk to you today about the call to lead because you've really stepped into a very highly visible role. You know, some people are leaders in a kind of behind the scenes kind of way and other people are leaders in an out front kind of way. So I'd love to have you tell us a little bit about what inspired you and what called you into this leadership role. Yeah, I'm so glad you asked about my story, to be honest, because I listen to my bio sometimes and I chuckle. I'm like, Oh, yeah. I mean, that's all great, but it's really my story that got me so passionate about doing what I do. And it also is interesting that you just said something really poignant is that I'm in a, like a very visible kind of leadership role. And if you knew me, oh my God, like 15, 16 years ago, I was very much so invisible. And that is my story. And so um, I'll try to make it short because I have a long version, a short version, but really the condensed version, um, and this is really what I love teaching and talking about, has to do with, you know, having a life that I once knew back in Chicago as a therapist. I practiced for many, many years, had a traditional life. I was married. I had the kids. I still have the kids. Had the husband. Don't have the husband any longer. Um, And we led a very traditional life. I even had the picket fence and the house. And so one day we pick up, we move across the country to La La Land here, and that's where the record stopped. You know, it was like everything that I knew up until that point completely stopped. And so we, I joked, you know, we did what all the other people here in California did and we get a divorce. Obviously, that there were other issues going on in this fairy tale. But you know when there is a fork in the road, you know, and, and you could take one path or the other. I have to say at that moment in my life, I was going down a very dark path and my clothes reflected it. <laughs> I had 
very black wardrobe, oversized clothes, the nursing bras, the Birkenstocks. I mean, it was not hot. Let me just put it to you that way. And I was thinking to myself, oh my gosh, how am I going to get out of my own way? And here's the thing. I was a therapist. I still am a therapist. But at that point, I was like, I should know better. And I got therapy myself. I had a great support system. I knew up here in my head, everything that I should be doing, yet I still couldn't get out of my own way. So what happened, and this is really what changed the nature of, you know, my thinking, the way I teach today is what happened in this moment where I looked in the mirror and I just hated what I saw. It was almost like all the pieces in the mirror just shattered to the ground. And I was like, what what did I become? This frumpy mom looking sad in her miserable dark clothes. It just, you know, it hit me. So what did I do? I went shopping. This is where it all started. I went shopping because first of all, nothing fit me and I needed just to feel better. So I go shopping and what am I doing? I'm pulling all the same clothes again, right? I'm thinking I'm up leveling myself, but yet I'm pulling dark dismal clothes, three sizes too big, And this personal shopper, she was watching me and she comes up to me and she said, ma'am, you know, I, I was wondering if maybe perhaps you'd like to try this on. And she holds up a red dress that looked like three sizes too small. And I said, that's really sweet of you, but that's so not my size. And that's really not my color. She said, honey, that is your color. That is your size. Try it on. (laughs) <laughs> and it was like she hit me over the head with that red dress. I call it my red dress moment. Mm-hmm. It was like I collapsed in that moment. And when I came to, I was like, you know, she's right. I need to try that dress on. So I go into the dressing room. I try it on. I twirl around like Cinderella. And I see myself. And it was like all the pieces that were shattered in the ground just came together in an instant. And I see my reflection. I was like, whoa, I am a princess. Like it was like I saw myself for the first time very differently. And I bought that dress that day as a costume. And I call it a costume because I still didn't believe it. I had to marinate in it. Mm -hmm. And as I walked out into the world in this red dress, all these things started happening. Well, a lot of it is what you heard in my bio, but it started with looking and feeling better about myself. And I realized that there was this symbiotic relationship between the outer and the inner when it came to my confidence and how I felt. Mm -hmm. So that is where everything was born. And from there, you know, I started having all these opportunities. I started realizing that When you viscerally feel different, when you put yourself into action, that is when things then go inward. So I used to believe as a therapist, you had to work from the inside out. I no longer believe that. And what I believe today is that you actually have to work from the outside in. And so my charisma quotient formula teaches that. And so that is how I I got started with all this. Beautiful. Well, I love that. And I think that it's both personally. I think it's both the outside in and the inside out, but I'll, I'll, you know, align with you for today's show because it's funny. I just came back from New York with a friend and we went last year right after her divorce. And I looked at her and I was like, girlfriend, we need to do something about this wardrobe. So so this divine intervention, like you had this divine intervention. And there was a dress that we found in a consignment shop that uh, literally it was made for her body. It fit her like a glove. And it was the most elegant, most beautiful dress I have ever seen. She looked like a princess, a fairy princess. It had this like beautiful zigzag down the side that was like cracked ice and the color was like ice blue perfect for her and I made her buy that dress I said I don't care how much that dress costs you gotta buy that dress and she's never (laughs) she's never worn it but it's literally a work of art and I looked it up later and it was like a literally it was a twelve thousand dollar designer high-end fashion designer dress that somehow magically appeared but putting different clothes on her and i done the same thing myself, it really started to change things for her as well. So I don't disagree that the outside really can create massive internal shifts as well. 
So exactly. Awesome. All right. Well, so you are definitely somebody who talks the walk and walks the talk. So what I'd love to have you talk about right now is as you changed the external, as you stepped out in your costume, right? As you put on the red dress role, right? Can you talk about what was going on internally? What was happening for you internally as you were projecting this red dress role out into the world? It's a great question. And it's something that I see in a lot of my clients because, you know, a lot of times people say like yourself, oh, well, that seems like, you know, how can just the red dress change your entire life? And obviously it's not just the dress, right? It's the vehicle at which sometimes you can get there. And for me, it's almost the symbiotic relationship. Of course, I'm a therapist. Of course, I believe in the inside work. But mind you, for me, going back to my story, I had done all the inside work. To the cows came home, you know? And, you know, it, sometimes it gets to the point of analysis paralysis where you have everything in your head. You know what you need to do intellectually. But it's not until things start synthesizing when you put yourself into action and you see something different. So what, in my mind, what was happening... I, and I remember specific moments as I was going down this new yellow brick road, because I had definitely pivoted to the other part of the, the road, is that I remember getting attention. And up until that point, I didn't realize until I wore the red dress that I was hiding. Mm. So my black clothes really served, you know, it was a purpose for me being a cocoon. And I see this mm. again in a lot of my mm. clients where it was a shield from men because quite honestly, I was scared. Mm. And so it was an excuse. Oh, well, you know, I, I just don't look good. So why would they ever be attracted to me? But meanwhile, I was making myself invisible. Remember, I, mm. I said I came from invisibility at that mm. point. And so the red dress forced me to become visible. But more than that, having me be comfortable being seen. Mm -hmm. And when I started feeling comfortable, I noticed that I started having this kind of positive impact in the way that people saw me and mm -hmm. treated me. And that actually made me feel better about myself. So again, it went kind of back and forth. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of the first like thing that I realized is even just the positive feedback, even from the body language aspect. Mm -hmm. And so I teach a lot about body language. When you wear something different, you can't help but to walk differently. Mm -hmm. I mean, I definitely walk differently in that dress mm -hmm. than I did in my Birkenstocks and nursing bras. And mind you, I wasn't even nursing at the time. It just shows you how stuck I was. So it really like, you know, like a costume, it got me into this different state. And there's a ton of research that shows you that you will perform differently you will actually um, outsell people. You will actually get people to pay you more money. You will attract people more when you work on that first impression piece. So for me, that was the first step is really getting comfortable with being seen and making connections with people upon first impression. And then I started doing more work on the inside and express myself mm -hmm. to get you know really the impact that I have today. Beautiful. Well, let's talk about the impact that you have today because you are quite visible. I mean, you're in major, major media, you're on major shows. There's a difference between putting on the red dress, right? Right. When you suddenly get visible and the level of visibility at a national and international level that you have cultivated for yourself. And what I think I heard you say was like the red dress started it, but you know, you had to say yes, right, to all of these Correct. opportunities. So I'd love to have you just give our, our listeners maybe one little tidbit, if you could, mm -hmm. about how to build the courage, like to have the heart to say yes to yourself, to say yes to your destiny, and to say yes to these big opportunities. It, yeah, you know, the biggest thing that prevents people from change is fear. And I know this as a therapist, and I really felt that for myself, is that it was a default button that was happening to me that, you know, the minute I started becoming more visible, I, I felt these fears creep up. <laughs> and so I was really working hard on what it was with those fears that kept me paralyzed. And 
the biggest thing that I had come to at that point, and this is what I teach today, is it was a lack of action, quite honestly. I, I was really good at, you know, staying home. I was really good at like just surfing the net online for dates when I wasn't really, you know, ready and I was scared to date. I was really good at like doing all these online courses mm -hmm. to, to prep myself to get ready to be an image consultant. Mm -hmm. And oh yeah, I was really good at just making calls and asking information and listening to podcasts. But it wasn't until I started going to networking events mm -hmm. and meeting people and asking questions how they got there. And then maybe it brought me to, you know, somebody else who could help me in some way. It wasn't until I actually went on a date and said yes to one of these online situations. It wasn't until I started doing all these things that added up to the bigger picture of success and visibility. And so my biggest advice to people is that it is about action. And I define, you know, I, I use this whole confidence unique confidence process with people. I define confidence kind of different than most people. I believe confidence is experience. I don't believe there's one person out there that's just not confident overall because there's always one area in people's lives. And I love honing in on that where people are confident. And you got to ask yourself, what is it about that particular area? Let's say it's your work that you feel confident in. Well, usually it's because you've practiced, you've had exposure, but positive experience around it. Mm. So when people come to me and they're not feeling confident or like in my life when I wasn't, I realized I had no dating experience. Of course I hated dating. Mm. <laughs> you know, of course I wasn't confident. Building a career from when I used to be just a social worker, I, what getting paid to help people, like that whole thing, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so I really had to work through that and also own my own value with it. Mm. So it does does go back to self-love. I say all the time, this isn't about the job. It isn't about the man. It's about you. And yeah. when you love you, that's when everyone else will too. Yeah. Magic will happen. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, we do need to take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to talk uh, more with Kim about where she can help you and give you some information about how to connect with her. But right now, Wickedly Smart Women, we need your help. If you're enjoying the show and want us to stay on the air, please consider making a donation at www.wickedlysmartwomen.com. And we'd also like to ask you to share with your lovely lady friends who you think might benefit from our content. So share the show for us, please. I want to say a big thank you to all of our listeners who are downloading, rating, and reviewing. We're welcoming thousands of downloads from all over the world. And I want to shout out this week to our listeners. Let me get my magic list out here. The latest listeners are in the United Arab Emirates. So shout out to the UAE and we'll be right back with Kim Seltzer. The Wickedly Smart Women podcast is brought to you by the Creative Age Consulting Group. Women, are you ready for a big revenue breakthrough so you can stop working like a man and being paid like a woman? Are you ready to take the leap and go deep to claim your value and convert your wisdom to wealth? Is now the time to fulfill your mission and change the world? Creative Age Consulting Group is hired by women just like you who want to break through to their brilliance and be heard by millions while building a sustainable business model that makes bank. Please visit apply.wealthylifemethod.com to apply for an invitation-only consultation. If you have been inspired to receive support in welcoming wealth by making your most heartfelt contribution to the world, be sure to apply for a consultation today. Once again, that is apply.wealthylifemethod.com or click in the link in the show notes to access the application. And we are back with our special guest today, Kim Seltzer. You can find out more about Kim at seltzerstyle.com, which we'll have in the show notes. And Kim is also going to be giving our listeners a free body style guide. And we will have the link for that in the show notes. As soon as this show goes live, you will see the link for that. So um, also, I would check out her Charisma Quotient podcast. I was actually on it. So thank you, Kim, for being on the show. You are awesome, too. Thank you. We love spreading the wealth. 
So let me ask you now, because you are a leader, let's talk about asking for help because what was interesting in your earlier story was you were shopping, you were attempting to make a change, but you were picking out the same exact clothes that were too big and too ugly for you. And all of a sudden, divine intervention in the form of this stylist showed up. Can you tell me what you notice about yourself in terms of maybe resistance to asking for help? Or in terms of finally maybe getting to the point where you're willing to ask for help and how you can help our listeners recognize when it's time to ask and to actually feel free to do so. Yeah, gosh. You know, it all goes back to what I was talking about before, and that is fear. I just did a podcast on the top five fears that keep you single, in fact. And, you know, looking at there's some there's a lot of different kinds of fears you know there's fear of failure there's fear of success there's fear of abandonment i mean you know there's a lot that can keep us stuck and what i find and this is when i see people make changes and i know this for myself there's usually an outside motivation or inside motivation that kind of stirs you up to hear a message or motivate you to make those changes Usually, you get to the point where you're just fed up. You know, either you're in so much pain that you can't take it anymore and you, you're just fed up. For me, it was looking in the mirror in that one moment and seeing this frumpy, sad mom. And I was, I was like, I can't do this anymore. And that's usually, so that's an outside kind of pain point motivation. There's also internal motivation where maybe there's some sort of reward that you're looking for. You know, a lot of times people will come to me and said, you know, I'm hoping for love again. They really want to find love and they're motivated to find that warmth, that, that connection with people. So there's no right or wrong, you know, whether it's external or internal, you know, pain or pleasure. If you can get to that point of wanting to change and you rate yourself from one to 10, 10 being the most motivated, one being not at all. If you're like five and below, you got to ask yourself, what is preventing you from being above a five and wanting to change? And usually the answers lie within the fears, but then what are you fearing? And if you can get at that and maybe either, you know, talk to Emerald or myself and we can help you uncover that for sure. Once you figure that out, then we can, you know, help you get over that hump because everybody needs a plan. We all need motivation. We all need that accountability that keeps us motivated. Often I'll, I'll call myself like a dating or confidence trainer more than anything else, like a personal trainer, because mm-hmm. we all need those like gold stars to keep mm-hmm. us going, you know? Mm-hmm. And so that's what I would say to people is, you know, think about how your life could look if you want to change and what do you want and go after it, but you need a plan in order to do it. And that's what coaches are so good at. Yeah. I think not only a plan, but you need to actually be willing to receive, right? Yeah. To receive yeah. the support, to receive the help. Cause like you could have stopped everything dead in its tracks when that dresser suggested yes. the red dress, you could have said, Oh no, no, thank you. I don't need your help. Right. You know, you could have pushed it away. And so, I believe that we all need to have collaborative partners to help us move ourselves along. It just exponentially moves us that much more quickly. It's so true. You know, I was going to mention, I remember when that personal shopper had come to me, I don't know if she had come to me, say like three months prior, if I could have actually heard it. I don't think I was fed up enough. I don't think I was ready to receive, like you said, but for some reason, I heard her loud and clear. And you're so right. It was like this like receptacle that just kind of came to me. I'm like, oh yeah, this is it. I got to try that dress on. <laughs> oh, this yeah. is the moment. Well, I had a similar experience with my work 20 some odd years, or not quite 20 years ago, but soon it will be 20 years where there wow. was just this moment where I, in the real estate business, where I was like, if I stay here for another minute, I'm going to die. And so I just took the flying leap. I didn't have any help at the time. I didn't even know what help would have looked like at the time. So some Mm -hmm. of us take leaps and some of us have helping hands and some of us have helping hands that show us the step-by-step. So, you know, what I want to make sure that we get across here is that there is hope 
And there is a possibility for creating significant change in your life from things as simple as getting help and saying yes to things that you haven't maybe considered in the past. So we've got time for one more question. And so I think the big question I want to ask you is about valuing your vision. Because at Mm -hmm. the point of the red dress, you didn't have the vision of what you've got going on now right, Kim? But at some point, as the red dress started to activate things in your life, you began to see yourself in a completely different way in this leadership role, in this more visible role. And that vision of creating something which came to you, you had to make the choice about whether or not you were going to value that vision mm-hmm. and invest your life force into it, invest your time, your energy, your money into making that vision into a reality. So can you speak to our mm-hmm. listeners a little bit about the process of valuing not only yourself, but also your vision as a leader? Yeah, I just, you know, it's funny. I think about the evolution of my business and and even thinking about my life before the divorce. It's almost like a different person (laughs) that I think about. And actually, I love that. I embrace it. And one of the things that I learned going down that path, the yellow brick road, and collecting in my basket all these tools was that nothing has to be definitive. Nothing has to be the end-all, be-all. And nothing has to be perfect. I think back in my younger self, I was doing things thinking that that was it. It has to be perfect. But we all evolve. We're transformative beings and we should be. And learning to embrace that, learning that nothing is black and white, there's so much beauty and gray and to embrace that. And with that flexibility, that can cause you to have this vision for yourself, but in a very organic way where you're not trying to control it or you're not trying to make it perfect. I mean, I'll, I'll use the example of, I remember my first website that I put up. It's I found it actually the other day. I was laughing. It was so funny. I'm like, oh my God. And I was thinking, it took me literally, Emerald, I think an probably a year to put that thing up in 2007. I'm like, that is what took me a year, you know? And so, you know, learning from that it is to just take action, just get it out there. There are no mistakes. There's no such thing as failures. It's actually experience that will just drive you to the next thing. Yeah. Well, what I love about what you're saying there as well is when you start taking action, things actually will ultimately speed up because momentum yes. momentum will get built. I did the same thing in 2007. I built my own website and I hand coded it with HTML. <laughs> like I was like, oh, let oh me my learn. gosh. H, let me learn HTML. How hard can that be? You know I'm so I mean? impressed. <laughs> like that was like crazy craziness, complete craziness, but you know, as we I think as we evolve and we say yes and we continue to take action, then momentum starts and things that like in 2007, it was harder to get a website together. And now we've taken enough action that everything in life has become easier. You know what I mean? Everything in life has become easier. My whole life is so easy, right? Exactly. Yeah. Well, beautiful. It is time for us to say goodbye, but it has been an absolute pleasure. And we are definitely going to be excited to see people get your free body style guide, which I'm sure is going to teach people how to dress for their body shape or style. And um, definitely remind everyone to go see Kim at seltzerstyle.com. Listeners, we do love feedback, so please let us know what you thought of today's show by calling into our listener line, which will also be in the show notes, or send in questions or guest suggestions to listeners at wickedlysmartwomen.com. We might even give you a shout out on the show. Thanks for tuning in. Keep your ears open. And remember, you are a wonderful woman. Thanks for tuning in, downloading, and listening. Be sure to review and rate Wickedly Smart Women on Apple Podcasts and share with other women who can benefit from today's episode. Wickedly Smart Women is the premier podcast series for informing, activating, and inspiring the leader who carries profound wisdom 
and knows that now is the time to welcome wealth. We welcome your feedback and guest suggestions and invite you to subscribe to our mailing list to be notified of each episode at wickedlysmartwomen.com.